Do you know the story of America's first serial killer? His name was H.H. H. Holmes, and his crimes were so heinous that they still shock and fascinate us today. You may not know that his life was even more twisted than his murders. We will explore nine of the most interesting facts about H.H. H. Holmes that will leave you absolutely horrified. Make sure you watch the entire video, we've saved the most interesting fact for last. His name wasn't actually H.H. H. Holmes. H.H. H. Holmes was born Herman Webster Mudgett to a relatively wealthy family in New Hampshire in 1861. In fact, he went by various aliases, including Dr. Henry Howard Mudgett and Henry Gordon. Legend has it that Mudgett chose the name Holmes as a homage to the fictional detective Sherlock Holmes. Mudgett briefly worked at a local Chicago pharmacy. This would be the first documented history of him using his alias Dr. Henry Howard Holmes instead of Herman Webster Mudgett. He had a troubled upbringing. Despite being born into a wealthy home, he was subject to physical and mental abuse by both parents. Disciplinary tactics employed by his parents included isolation and food deprivation. His father also held kerosene-soaked rags over his children's mouths to quiet them when they cried. Holmes was abused and tortured by not only his parents, but by classmates as well. He was bullied for being described as odd and for his good grades. One particular bullying incident that sparked his curiosity about human anatomy was being forced into a doctor's office by classmates and having the hands of a skeleton forcibly placed on his face. The culmination of abuse and bullying led him to seek refuge in the woods near his home, where he started capturing and dissecting small animals, including reptiles, rabbits, and dogs. Dissecting animals gave him flesh-cutting skills and fed his morbid curiosity for the dead. The studying and dissection of animals at such a young age would prove helpful for his gruesome crimes later on down the line. His first human kill was thought to be in childhood. While many associate Holmes as the Chicago's World Fair serial killer, his first kill may have been in childhood. At the age of 11, a childhood friend named Tom died while in his company. Tom was said to have fallen off a landing of an abandoned home, but it was speculated that Holmes actually pushed his friend to his death. He went to medical school. You would think being thrown into a doctor's office and accosted by a human skeleton would scar Holmes so severely that he would be turned off from a medical career. Instead, the experience only ignited his interest in human anatomy as Holmes began to study medicine at the University of Michigan in 1882. When Holmes was questioned about the experience, he said, it was a wicked and dangerous thing to do to a child of tender years and health, but it proved a heroic method of treatment, destined ultimately of curing me of my fears and to inculcate in me, first, a strong feeling of curiosity, and later a desire to learn, which resulted years afterwards in my adopting medicine as a profession. H.H. H. Holmes While in medical school, Holmes began his life of crime by stealing corpses and using them to collect insurance money. He would steal cadavers from the anatomy lab, disfigure the corpses, and pass them off as people who died in accidents to collect insurance money. He perfected his insurance scamming technique well enough to learn how to swindle women involved with him romantically out of their insurance money and other fortunes later in life. He was a master con artist. Before Holmes started killing for sport, he was a master manipulator and con artist, swindling everyone he knew for money. He conned associates, lovers, employees, and landlords out of money. Because of his history of defrauding, he was said to be avoiding past due bills when he fled from New York to Chicago. On his way to Chicago, he married Myrta Belknap. She came from a wealthy family, and her parents gave Holmes enough money to build the, the infamous Murder Castle. The deed to the property was put in the names of Myrta and her mother to avoid the debt he would rack up and ultimately not pay. 
He often scammed construction workers of his hotel by firing them without pay. He knew that workers of the Chicago Fair were not entitled to pay for work less than two weeks, so he used this to his advantage. He also claimed work on the hotel was shoddy to get out of paying workers. The act of conning a fellow con man eventually led to Holmes' arrest and conviction. Holmes was a womanizer. At one point in his life, Holmes had three wives in three different cities, with none of the women knowing anything about one another. Holmes had a great deal of charm and was very handsome, which helped him to convince women to take out life insurance policies, naming him as the beneficiary. Holmes fathered two children, a son and a daughter, from two of his three marriages. A common scam for women he did not end up marrying was to ask a woman for her hand in marriage, convince her to put his name on her life insurance policy, and for the unsuspecting woman to mysteriously go missing. Then, when questioned by others, Holmes would tell others that his betrothed had left town. Many other women associated with Holmes in platonic relationships often came up missing in his presence. Clara Holton was one such woman. After medical school, Holmes worked at a Chicago pharmacy owned by Miss Clara Holton. Soon after starting to work at the pharmacy, Clara mysteriously disappeared and Holmes took over the pharmacy. Soon after Miss Holton's disappearance, he purchased the vacant lot across the street from the pharmacy where he started construction on the murder castle. The murder castle was constructed for killing and disposing of bodies. Holmes took advantage of the traffic the Chicago World's Fair in 1893 would bring and built a hotel in close promixity. Holmes carried out his heinous crimes in his hotel. Located three miles west of where the fair was held in Jackson Park, the hotel completed construction just a year before the fair in 1892. It was an elaborate building with 100 rooms that covered the entire city block at the corner of South Wallace Avenue and 63rd Street in Englewood. The murder castle was built with complex architecture and a series of designs to suit the preference of killing his victims. The murder castle contained an operating room, a mortuary, a room for human experiments, and a torture chamber. His rooms allowed him to kill without detection from the outside world. The castle's bottom floor consisted of his own drugstore and various other shops, while the top floor held offices, as well as a labyrinth of rooms and doorways opening to brick walls, stairways leading to nowhere, and an oddly angled hallway. The second floor was reserved for guests, or shall we say, victims. The hotel was a maze with inner workings only known to homes. The hotel consisted of corridors leading nowhere, concealed passages behind walls, secret staircases, sliding panels, and peepholes into rooms from the back of pictures. He had trapdoors everywhere that concealed metal chutes that connected to an elaborately designed basement. The secret metal chute was used to dispose of bodies in the basement, where he and his assistant would dissect the bodies, strip them of their flesh, and turn them into skeleton models that were sold to medical schools. The bodies that weren't turned into skeletons were buried in lime pits, incinerated in giant furnaces, or put in barrels of corrosive acid. It's not surprising that many construction workers were either fired after a few weeks of working or just mysteriously disappeared so they wouldn't get suspicious of the true motives of Holmes. He is speculated to be Jack the Ripper. There have long been rumors that Holmes may have also been the infamous Jack the Ripper. Some evidence suggests that Holmes may have been Jack the Ripper. While there is no concrete evidence to support this claim, there are several intriguing similarities between the two killers. Both operated during the late 19th century and both preyed on helpless victims who were alone and vulnerable. Additionally, Holmes spent time in England during the period when the Ripper murders were taking place. It's worth noting that many of the victims attributed to Jack the Ripper were never found, which would explain why no concrete evidence links Holmes to the murders. 
On the other hand, not all of the victims of Holmes could be accounted for either. Let's look closely at the evidence linking Holmes to the Jack the Ripper murders. Both killers killed their victims in similar ways. Both used knives to mutilate their victims' bodies, and both targeted women who were alone and vulnerable. Both killers were adept at avoiding capture. Both killers had a medical background. It has long been speculated that Jack the Ripper was a doctor or someone with medical training since he understood human anatomy well. Holmes, on the other hand, was actually a doctor. The Ripper killings started in 1888, and the known Holmes killings were between the years of 1891 through 1894. These dates are important because they allowed the timeline for the murders of both killers to work out. This is even taking into consideration the extended travel time via boat in the 1800s. Just as there is speculation about Holmes being Jack the Ripper, there are some pieces of evidence that suggest he's not. The two killers had different M.O.s. While both men used knives, Jack the Ripper also engaged in strangulation and disembowelment while H.H. Holmes did not, at least not that we know of. Additionally, while Jack the Ripper primarily targeted prostitutes, H.H. H. Holmes killed both men and women alike regardless of their profession, though most of his victims were guests at his hotel. The two killers had different motives. As far as we know, Jack the Ripper's murders were motivated by anger towards women, while H.H. H. Holmes killed primarily for financial gain since he often robbed his victims before killing them. Of course, it is also possible that these similarities are simply coincidences. But given Holmes' propensity for violence and deception, it is certainly worth considering the possibility that he was also responsible for the gruesome murders attributed to Jack the Ripper. However, there is no conclusive evidence linking Holmes to the Ripper murders, and the true identity of Jack the Ripper remains a mystery. He was buried under 10 feet of cement. Holmes was eventually apprehended in Boston in 1894 after attempting to fake his own death and collect on an insurance policy. He was tried and convicted in Philadelphia the following year and sentenced to hang. Upon his arrest, Dr. Holmes confessed to 27 murders with plans to kill at least a dozen more, although some believe the actual number is closer to 200. He was tried and convicted for the murder of Julia Connor. However, the exact details of her death remain a mystery. Due to his perceived popularity with the public and the fact that he himself dissected bodies for sport, he requested his body be buried under cement to prevent grave robbers. In 2017, archaeologists exhumed Holmes' body to quell the rumors that he used a body double and faked his own death. After five days of digging at his grave site, a pine coffin surrounded by cement was uncovered, but it was empty. This finding seemed to bode well with the rumors at hand, but the team decided to dig a little bit deeper before entirely giving up. Suspecting the first coffin was a decoy, they continued digging. Under the first coffin, they found another coffin, fully surrounded by concrete. Once the team carefully chiseled the concrete and opened the coffin, they were greeted by Holmes's decomposing body clothed in a waistcoat, suit coat, and boots with no pants. That wraps up our list of nine most interesting facts about H.H. H. Holmes. What interesting fact did you learn about his life today? Let us know in the comments. And if you learned something new today, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to Don't Freak Out for more videos.